Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Today, again, um, interesting news on crypto, so let's just dive into it. First, we have news on XRP. Iranian crypto exchange Nobitex pairs the country's national real currency with Ripple's XRP. Iranian crypto exchange Nobitex pairs the country's national currency with XRP. XRP, the third biggest cryptocurrency, currently continues its expansion of adoption. This time, the cryptocurrency exchange based in Iran, Nobitex announced that they are pairing XRP with Iranian, Iranian RIA, IRR. This makes IRR the 44th yet currency to be tradable with XRP. This move was essential because SWIFT has suspended a few banks in the country from using its messaging system in November 2018. Okay, so first up, right, um, good news for XRP because here you are saying basically that um, a lot more banks and a lot of countries are adopting XRP. So that's one thing good. Second, um, this is mainly because in Iran, a lot of the banks are not allowed to use the international um, bank transfer, uh, money transfer system, which is SWIFT, right? SWIFT is the um, very widespread, very common, very popular 800 years old system to transfer cross-border funds, right? Normally among businesses or even individuals, um, you know, and businesses or individuals using the banks, they are using the SWIFT network to transfer the funds. But now, because there's an XRP, right? And because they, these countries' banks are anyway sanctioned by US and then they cannot use the SWIFT, so naturally they will go to an alternative like XRP which is, of course, it is um, sanction resistant, right? And it is also, it can move funds at instant speed and very low fees, right? So that is the key. And this is exactly the key point why XRP will win, will still, you know, stand its place against something like a JPM coin. Because JPM coin is still a permission, you still need permission. You need to be onboarded as a client of JPM, JP Morgan Bank, to be able to use their JPM coin, right? So that is why XRP still have his users because after the release or introduction of JPM coin, there are a lot of people think that XRP, uh, you know, is a direct threat, and that's why XRP might be displaced. But this is one of those very clear use cases of why, right, the benefits of XRP and why it can still exist alongside something like a JPM coin. In fact, JPM coin will, in at some point in the future, people will realize that you know it is a closed system, so only a few, you know, it will only appeal and actually be used by their clients only. Next. XRP eToro CEO, CEO very interested in forming relationship with Ripple Labs. So there is um there is an interview conducted with eToro CEO Yoni Asia at the Paris FinTech Forum and asking him about his interest in forming partnership with Ripple. And he said, we are one of the largest trading platforms for XRP, so very interested in forming a relationship with Ripple Labs and understand what we can do together. So eToro is not the only platform thinking of partnering with Ripple. Binance CEO also recently said that they would like to partner with Ripple, but exactly what is the form of partnership? What will each other benefit? That is still unclear. But both eToro and Binance, which is very, very large trading, you know, one is a very large tr crypto trading firm, Binance, and eToro is a very large trading company in the traditional assets. They are both very interested to work with Ripple, and that is still, you know, again, very good news for XRP and Ripple. Also, Ripple, despite all these news, right, that's um, like not good for them amid all the issuance of JPM coin, they have recently signed up also with Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority, which is the central bank of Saudi, yeah, that to offer two local banks a pilot program to use their X current, and which, mean, which means using XRP platform. And this will go live in quarter one, 2019. Again, really, really good news, right? So as the banks like JPM continue to issue coins that are in direct threat to XRP, 
XRP and Ripple continue to execute on what is important to them, which is signing up more and more banks to use their ecosystem, right? And this is also the first time a central bank is actually leading the charge to sponsor the banks to actually use XRP. And that is very key. So you have government support and the chances of the banks using um, XRP will be even higher. Next, Binance Exchange crypto coin cleansing continues as Clock, Mod, Sort, Sub, and Wings delisted. Now, if you have any of these coins, right, Cloak, Mod, Sort, Sub, and Wings, please reconsider. Do you still want to hold them now? Because Binance, being the most reputable and the largest crypto exchange, are delisting these coins. And a lot of these coins, right, a lot of their trading, majority of their trading volume are on Binance. And now they are delisting, right? And the reason that they are delisting the coins is because Binance said, right, reasons could range from a lack of commitment to the Binance ecosystem due to dodgy behavior on the part of the team behind the coin. So, take for example, SORT token, right? Uh, so, in February 2018, the coin found itself in a bit of trouble with SEC, Securities Co um, Exchange Commission. They received a sub from, from the commission for allegedly giving times and soliciting information on the funds raised during its CEO, which totaled $50 million. As a result of this, the coin's value fell sharply from $18 per coin to $1, and the management of SORT then announced that they would be removing the option of paying principal to loans using SORT tokens. This problem was further aggravated by the fact that SORT tokens were given a market retail value higher than the actual market price. After the announcement of their delisting, their value fell even further from $0.21 cents to $0.17. Cents. This is mostly because the Binance sort USDT and the sort BTC trading pairs constitute 70% of the trading volume for the coin. So needless to say, the future of the sort token is unknown and uncertain. So please, please, right, for these small coins, please be very careful what you're holding into. And that's why for newbies especially, the advice is really just to hold Bitcoin and really just the top few um, coins in terms of market cap, right? So yes, even if you look at like Nasdaq, when they issue an index for cryptocurrencies, who are they issuing for? They're only issuing for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And if you look at, again, the major exchange like Arizax, right, or BACT, which are the coins that they say they're going to issue futures? Again, only the top coins, right? So all these are to tell you, most likely, the ones that will continue to survive in the long term are going to be Bitcoin and the major top cryptocurrencies only, right? That Again, that's really my opinion. But again, the fact is in your eyes, right? You can really see for yourself. So the small coins, be very, very careful. Of course, I understand the attractiveness of them because they are most of the time is penny stocks, right? And then the chances of it appreciation can be much higher but then again the risk of it failing is also much higher right so yeah next accounting firm grant Thornton llp releases a monthly report on circles usdc tokens so yesterday on february 15th grant Thornton, a top accounting services firm issued their fourth monthly attestation report on the us dollar reserves that are currently backing its usdc pool usd coin pool the independent scrutinization process showed that all seems to be expected. At the time of reporting, the accountants noted that there was the expected equilibrium between circles, total number of issued and outstanding USDC tokens, right? So this is, again, just an applaud to Circle because they voluntarily audit themselves, right? Giving the industry a full accountability, a full transparency, right? That they are... Stable coins are fully backed by US dollars. So this is really good, right? Because what happened was Tether was forced to be audited because there was um, suspicion that they might be manipulating the market. But now a stable coin like USDC is taking a proactive move to be auditing themselves. And you know, this is already a fourth monthly report. So it's really, really good. And do it on a monthly basis. So yes, we need um, the players having such high standards in the industry, right? Then you can only attract really the institutions and the big money, giving them more credibility and even retail investors to come in.
Next, right, we have Visa and MasterCard plan to increase transaction fees. So you might think what it has got to do with cryptocurrency. So let's see. Visa and MasterCard are planning to increase the transaction fees for US merchants who accept card payments. This is reported by Reuters. And this is going to come into effect in April 2019. And it's going to likely to further damage the already fragile relationship between payment providers and merchants. So Visa already confirmed that the fees would rise in April. Exactly what fees is not clear, but then they said they are going to increase the fees for banks, but not merchants. But naturally, the banks are not going to fully absorb the increase, right? They are going to pass some of it to the merchants. But on the flip side, cryptocurrency, right, is a perfect alternative for merchants to use and the fees are super low compared to Visa and Master and they are not increasing their fees. Right? If anything, fees are coming down. Yeah. So naturally, this is again one of those, hopefully these kind of moves by just incumbents like Visa and MasterCard are indirectly promoting cryptocurrency, right? So yes, you see, and also they looked at um, in Q4 2018 alone, Visa net income, net profit rose to 2.85 billion and is 33% increase compared to a year ago. Similarly, MasterCard also, the profit is 2 billion, right? 33% jump again from the same period last year. So these companies are already earning huge profits and why are they increasing fees now, right? Yes, so is it to offset because they see um, a crisis is going to come that they expect their revenue is going to come down and then they increase their fees but either way they are shooting themselves in the foot because you know it's just pushing the merchants normal merchants who probably don't think about cryptocurrency to now think about alternatives right and cryptocurrencies are a perfect alternatives that they can really consider Next, Norway anarcho capitalist smart city adopts crypto as sole recognized medium of exchange. Now, so Labourstad, a private anarcho capitalist city in Norway, they have adopted a cryptocurrency native to its blockchain powered smart city platform as its official medium of exchange. But it is unfortunately not a public coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin, right? They have actually adopted their own coin called City Coin, yeah. But they adopt a very similar um, process of creation, like Bitcoin. They use something called proof of stake consensus algorithm. Sorry, so not Bitcoin. It's something like EOS, right? Um, consensus in which block validators are selected based on the number of tokens a given node has staked in their wallet, rewarding shareholders with tokens in return for securing the network. So very, very interesting because that, you know, a city itself in Norway are adopting their own coins, but inspired, of course, by cryptocurrency, right? Because they're using the same kind of protocol to create their coins and they're choosing proof of stake, I believe, because it's a simpler version, right? And less cost, of course, and it's a cheaper, um, you know, time to market. But the thing is, of course, then, because they are using their own coins, they can only use this in their own city. And this is exactly what they plan to do. They, you know, it's planned to be used in within the city, uh, either to pay for government services or just private services. Yeah. The interesting thing is that, you know, of course, to for a, for a city so forward looking and if in the future they want to, because People in this city know, invariably have to trade outside, right, of their city and of their country. Then for them to adopt cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, like XRP will definitely be much higher because they're already used to the idea of a cryptocurrency. But this is their own, right? So, yeah, interesting. But at the same time, I wish... Right, that they have used something that's already existed, something that has already shown to be secure and safe, like Bitcoin or other major cryptocurrencies. Sorry, next, Rakuten Pay will integrate Bitcoin support by March 2019. So Rakuten is a very huge retail company in Japan. It's almost like Amazon in US, yeah? And they're now going to accept Bitcoin starting March 2019. And that is really good news. Again, pushing the adoption of Bitcoin to more mainstream. Next, we have interview with crypto optimist Brian Kelly says, Bitcoin is still 50% undervalued. 
Now, the author of the Bitcoin Big Bang, How Alternative Currencies Are About to Change the World by Brian Kelly, calls himself an optimist when it comes to the future of cryptocurrencies. So he is also a CNBC's prominent commentator, who is also the founder and CEO of digital currency investment firm BKCM LLC. He analyzes markets on an everyday basis and tends with 50% right trading wise. Now, the thing is, but first he thinks that Bitcoin might just go down much further to 1,500 level, but that will be only a very short time. It stays there and then it will come to an end. That means the winter will come into an end and then it will then go up from there. But on the point where, you know, people ask him, do you see a... So anyway, sorry, let's move on. Let's continue reading first, yeah? Here's the thing, the sellers that we have seen recently are almost four sellers. Some CEOs had to raise cash because they say they can't hold it in crypto all the time. These are signs of the end. I don't know if it, the end is here or it's a little bit lower, but those are the signs of the end. And in 2019, if I'm looking at it, the focus will be on the currency, meaning Bitcoin, Litecoin, some of those, because we have quite a bit of geopolitical tension in the world. And you feel it is contributing to the price. And he said, yes, we are starting to see some global macro players use Bitcoin as an alternative to their gold position or as a way to hedge against fiat currency fluctuations and volatility. But, they, again, but then he clarified that he said, these macro funds, right, global macro players, so you can be thinking about like, governments maybe, right? That they say they are looking into Bitcoin because they are looking at a safe haven that's uncorrelated to every other asset. So they want returns, right, really? Because if everyone agree a crisis is going to come and that will badly affect equity and bonds market. So you need something else that really is uncorrelated to safeguard your return and or even increase your return manifold, right? And that is what they are hoping and they are holding cryptocurrency like Bitcoin for. Um, yeah, and when asked on ETF, whether it is happening in 2019, he said no shot for an ETF in 2019. And um, yeah, and he said basically that, you know, possibly in 2020, he thinks, because there's still a lot of clar regulations need to be clarified this year before, you know, that, uh, ETF can come again next year. Um, yeah, and when asked whether, you know, he see this as the low and what's the differentiation or how do you recognize whether it's a bottom or is a bull market again, he said, I can remember in November, December, and even frankly in January 2018, I was getting phone calls daily, like how can I get into your fund? I need to get into that. And they at BKCM, his fund, do a monthly entry. And it's not something that you get into every day. That was happening at the peak. At the bottom, the phone does not ring. It's the exact opposite. The euphoria that we saw last year is a mirror image of the pessimism we are seeing now. And so what you want to look for at the bottom are extreme pessimism. And you say, um, then the thing is on asking on the crisis and what is the benefits or what's the impact on crypto, he said, it is really, really positive. He said, because what we have done lately is taken all the risk off of the private balance sheets and put them onto the government balance sheets. And so there's a very different scenario and that's very positive for crypto. You think about what backs a crypto fiat currency is the full faith and credit of the government. But if the government debts are to a point but they can't pay it, then the credit of the government is in question. You may want to look for an alternative type of currency. If everybody agrees that crypto is going away, that's the time I want to buy. I don't think crypto is going away. In fact, I see it becoming much more of a mainstream asset. I think the next two years could see Bitcoin and what I would call the other currencies, probably five or six kind of pure currencies. I think you will see those play a major role in investors' portfolio over the next two years, right? So yes. So again, he also said that when asked what, you know, if based on his fundamental model, how much he thinks Bitcoin is worth, he thinks it is 50% undervalued. That means he possibly think that to in his model, the fair value of Bitcoin is now about $7,000, right? And basically, and also he said that now he, at least based on his firm's amount of phone calls that they receive about entry into their um, crypto, it is extreme pessimism now already, and that is a sign of very, very bearish market. And he said that basically, these are the times when people should be buying, right? So really, right, that's also my sentiment, and I totally agree with Brian Kelly. Again, not financial advice, just that I agree with him, right? And 
you should also consider should you increase your holdings at this price, right? If you have enough, great. But if you can still increase more, do you want to, right? And will you have this chance again? Or if you buy into the belief that crypto may, Bitcoin may come down even further in maybe next month or so before it go up again, do you want to wait then? Or is it better to average out your entry price without knowing what the future holds, yeah? So yes. Drug dealer fights to prevent Canadian police from forfeiting his Bitcoin. So a Canadian online drug dealer snared by an undercover police agent on the dark web is planning to be allowed to keep half of the 288 Bitcoins that police seized from him as process of crime. With prosecutors seeking a court order to forfeit this crypto stash worth 1.1 million US dollars, the 30-year-old dealer agrees not all, all, not all of his Bitcoin was used for criminal purpose. Now, this is one of those cases that is very important to highlight to people that actually Bitcoin is not fully anonymous. That means if it is used by criminals, right, which is one of the big, big negative conception or big negative connotation that people associate with Bitcoin is that it is going used by criminals mostly. The thing is that actually it is good if criminals use Bitcoin because Bitcoin can be tracked and in many cases even it can be maybe easier to track than cash, right? Cash really you know, is traceless but in terms of Bitcoin because it's online, if through a lot of chain analysis, people can actually track who owns the Bitcoin. It's exactly proven through this case. But so the thing is then the fact that if criminals use Bitcoin, it's actually good for the police, yeah? So, so again, this argument or this negative connotation associated with Bitcoin will not stand because bit, uh, criminals will soon find out that, right? They are probably not better off. They're, in fact, they are worse off using Bitcoin for criminal activities, right? They will soon find out that with more and more cases like this, right? Court cases like this, criminals are generally very smart. They will realize then that Oh, Bitcoin, because the police are getting smarter and they can do a lot of chain analysis and they can find out who are who are the holders behind them and it is even easier to track down. So then, in the near future, I believe that Bitcoin will not be used so much for criminal activities. In fact, it will be back then to fiat, cash fiat like USD because USD being the reserve currencies, they are the number one, in fact, used by criminals today and in the future, I believe they will also be the number one. So yeah, that's why for today and hope you're having a great time and thank you so much for watching, right? And please subscribe if you like this episode. Yeah, because then you will be, you know, get um, get notified of future episodes, right? And thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day, everyone. And God bless. Thank you.